Uh, hi, uh, my name is Adri. Um, my Instagram is Be the Weed. Uh, yeah, this is a growers interview. Um, so I, uh, I grew up in this area, um, and when I was like, I mean, I've smoked weed my whole life. Well, not my, of course, not my whole life, but like um, through my teenage years, and uh, I had some friends that were like trying to put an operation together in Oregon. So they <coughs> knew me as like. A, the plant loving person so they were like hey how about we get this girl you know send her out there to oregon she'll grow for us so that's what happened they got a house in oregon and kind of just set me up with like three rooms a whole bunch of equipment and i was just like okay let's go so yeah so i did that back in 2014 did that for like two years um and then was like okay i just kind of like want my own little my own little house small grow which is like what i like more than like you know mass producing stuff i like a little small batch uh, so I did that for a few few years and then I came back over here and then I stopped growing for like a few months and then it was still like illegal in Virginia and I just like couldn't help myself off the record but I like started back up <laughs> started growing here again and uh, but I've, I've grown plants like my whole life uh, I love plants did you grow? Um, my grandma gave me this like philodendron I was probably like eight years old or something but I like carried it with me everywhere and like a little pot and called it happy and like brought it with me brought it with me everywhere and was like super possessive over it if like people like shook it I was like whoa <laughs> you know stop like gotta be gentle with my plant so uh, <laughs> I wouldn't say better because um, I mean people have their 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 opinions on it. a lot of people will say that like growing with organics brings out your your terpene profiles and your and your like stronger highs and your more uh, like a higher uh, production of resins and stuff but uh, in my opinion so the, the plant itself um, is an organic uh, earthling I guess it's got cells and DNA and you know um, a soul, I guess, in my opinion. So I, I feel like uh, creatures of this planet, they flourish in a diverse ecosystem. Um, whereas like a synthetic, you have inert medium, you have, you know, chemicals, you have no other life there. Um, and so like with, with organics, you have microbiology on all levels. So you have help from all types of uh, microorganisms, from worms, from all types of creatures. And uh, I think that brings more life in your weed, in your food, in your, you know, whatever you're doing. I guess like you can apply that biodiversity to like business, you know, you you have people on different levels in your business doing other things you really can't do like completely by yourself. So um, in my opinion, I guess weed doesn't really like to be lonely. So <laughs> and then at the end of the day, I think the uh, I think the planet also like thanks us as well for, you know, producing less chemicals and less plastics. and. Um, Fungus is, is uh, they're like the all, I mean, in my, uh, let's see, fungus is like, <laughs> some people, no, 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 let me not go there. Um, they're like the, the gatekeepers, the messengers, the caregivers. So they, 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 they um, read messages, send messages. They make sure everything um, is, is functioning and and um, what's the word I'm looking for? They just they make sure everything's flowing how it's supposed to, um, and so they're like guardians of the soil, guardians of us, guardians of our, you know like our minds, our all that. I mean, I guess you can just like take it up further if you want. To. I'm not going to say mushrooms are like God or anything, but pretty close um, off the record. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, um, they, uh, plants are like their babies. Um, well, I guess we'll take that back again. We're at, they're everyone's mushrooms babies. So um, I feel like they just take care of everybody. Um, you know, making sure everybody has all their, the nutrients that they need and they can set out and, you know, get it from other trees, get it from other plants, get it from other like elements in the soil, break it down so they can, they like, are just kind of like all powerful of the soil so yeah so yeah sort of i mean i probably know like 0. 0.00001 of like how plants talk to each other but like my theory uh is that um i think like it's hard for us to understand because you know we have eyes and ears and like other things to perceive so it's hard to understand how maybe something else perceives like what's in front of them but um 
through vibrations and sounds and lights and just like uh, like like when I when I walk outside and I look at trees and you know how like each tree bark has like a it's like a unique um, like a fingerprint almost like the bark that they have I feel like that is a way that plays into how they perceive vibrations the way things like um, you know like they can perceive like a fingerprint kind of um, even though we're not really aware of it I feel like we have like minute perceptions of you know things nerve nerve endings and stuff like that but. Again, it's not something that I really understand, I guess. Um, but yeah, I definitely think they, they talk to each other. Their wind and vibrations and mycelium and touch when the wind blows, so yeah. Oh, uh, let's see. Um, you know, I like, I like gassy, I like candy. I kind of like some like, um, like lemony Cinderella 99 type, but um, I always go for like something different. If it smells different, I really like a, a unique, something unique, whether it's like a weird grape candy with some tires or just something, I don't know, something that's like out of the usual is like what I look for. Nothing in particular, because I'll, I'll smoke anything if it's, if I'm feeling it, you know. Yeah. The weird smell is where it's at. Yeah, yeah. it's like, is it's this really dog weird. poop just... or is this candy? <laughs> um, I mean, I'll, sm I'll smoke it and see. I don't know, but this is the dog. That's happening, right? Yeah. It's like, it's like should we be smoking? Should we be <laughs> then you're like, it looks good. It kind of has like vanilla candy on the back end. I don't know. Oh, hell yeah, I take advice from other gr growers. Um, like, even though I was telling you organics, I, I take advice from, from salt or any type of grower, because, like, I mean, I'm actually, I'm actually not that good at growing. <laughs> so, yeah, I take advice from uh, take advice from other growers all the time. Ooh, my favorite grower would have to be my Nana. She's, uh, she, I mean, she never really grew weed, but she had plants everywhere, and just the gentle way that she, like, cared for them, and... Um, they were always healthy, always cared for, and she like, I feel like she had special relationships with them, so that was like <clears throat> something I admired. Sometimes, uh, um, like, I know if I've like walked around outside and you see a forest and like some of them, some of the trees that have just like never been able to get to the, to the, to the top, they're just kind of like dying and dwindling away, but I feel like there is a, like, there's a, What's the word for it? There's like a, like a, neither good nor bad, but a realization of for what is and what isn't, you know what I mean? So if there's a way to like bring a plant back uh, in the eyes of like all the other plants that it, I think between the mycelium and the other plants, I think they can like honestly help that plant or eliminate that plant, like with no hard feelings, you know, just like how, uh, what's what's most beneficial for the ecosystem or, or the other plants involved, um, no love lost, you know. For the greater good. Yeah, for the greater good. <laughs> oh, hmm. Okay. That would be like, oh dear, like having a light leak and, you know, I harm my plants and I just have to like carry out grow cycles or like, or like, I guess, you know, in terms of like being mother nature, maybe I've messed up of something and I have to like either choose to keep going with the plant or like eliminate it or have like got pests in my whole garden now I have to kill everybody stuff like that's kind of hard for me uh, well it, it's I mean it's all science I think and it's also all feel because I, I feel like what organically comes to our, our minds is we're part of science um, so you know what you feel what your plants are telling you once you get to a, a point where you can communicate with them it's it is sort of science um, but I mean whether it's been science, like the truth of how everything is, whether it's been discovered or like portrayed the right way, I, um, I think it's all, uh, you know, there's a science to it all, but there's also a lot of feel. So uh, I like at this point, I, I feel like my plants really speak to me. I can go in there and tell like, like, you know, you repot, you have that two, two, three days to where then you like go in there and you can like see that they've like found new space for the roots and you can like see and feel like their, their attitudes or their, their vibes and like you can feel when they're hungry or what they need or if they're thirsty or, you know, you can kind of like, is it too hot? Is it too cold? Is it too windy? Is it too humid? Um, uh, 
I guess I've gotten to a point where I can I can kind of feel that in my garden, so um, that's a lot of feel for me. Uh, but in the beginning, when you're doing your research, it's a lot of science. So, yeah. uh -huh. I mean, <laughs> that's a funny one because, like, like of course, if you have uh, some shitty genetics, and I mean, you have a great environment, you can only go as far as like the genetics will allow you. But vice versa, if you have an environment that's shitty and great genetics, then you still can't take it that far. But um, but that's like if like like someone's had a bad life, like nature and nurture, right? Someone's had a, a bad life and, um, you know, they go through it, they come out fine, but somebody else, you put them in the same environment, they might not come out fine. So I guess some genetics are more sensitive to nature or nurture. So some, it might be like 80, 20 nature, you know what I mean? And it's like a lot of them have a, um, a stronger nature, I'd say, and some of them have like, are more susceptible to, I need nurture, um, you know, so. I guess as like a breeder, a grower, like a pheno hunter, um, you want to look for those strains with like stronger natures so you can kind of put them through anything um, and that'll give you like a little bit more of your, gen I guess, so I guess it's genetics, you know? Gen yeah, I mean ego will hurt anything because it's like how can you, there's so much valuable information out there, how can you, um, like if, you're, if you already know everything, then you kind of close yourself off to it. And I think as humans, we're constantly evolving and learning new things, so you should always try to be open and, um, yeah. But yeah, ego can, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I watch it every day, I'm just like, we all grow great weed, there's so much weed, there's so much weed. <laughs> there's so many ways to grow it, so let's just, uh, Weed. There's so much weed, and it's like, mine's the best. I'm like, well, it's going to be gone in like a couple days. <laughs> so, um, so, I mean, there are so many things, like, of course, you know about like how there's endless fruits and vegetables that are pollinated by bees, and 90% uh, 90 of all the fruits and vegetables that we eat are pollinated by honeybees um, directly. But there are things like, like cotton um, for our clothing. Um, that's also pollinated by bees. Yeah, there's so much. So if like, but there's that. That's like, I mean, endangered species. Yes, but um, they're very beneficial. Um, you know, parts of our ecosystem. That if you took away bees, or if you like took bees out of that equation, everything would kind of it would it would stop the flow. You know, and things would crash here and fall here. So it's like. Uh, yeah, I mean, I told you earlier, I think that there's an importance of, of, of all life, spiders, bees, all that, but bees are like extra, extra important. They, um, I mean, if we're using them for, or using like their honey for our, for our medicine, it's like, it's like a collective essence of like all of the flowers, medicinal flowers, medicinal plants and trees in like a certain area. And that's like brought together in like a, a goo that can kind of be preserved for like thousands of years, which is, um, yeah, isn't that, isn't that cool? They're so cool. Bees are so cool. Um, but yeah, um, they're, bees are, bees are, um, they're, and I wouldn't say they're in danger. Yeah, they kind of are in danger, but, uh, cause we're, we take away their habitat, you know? Um, but in, in my, uh, research and I guess, um, I guess there's always a balance in the world and you kind of live in the world that you like look after look you know look for and like uh but what from what i've seen there have been like millions more people like on the daily getting beehives doing research finding you know like really looking into it i see like a a, a boom and and people like going after to, to save the bees like i think it's um it's one of those things that like, yeah, uh, I don't think hope is lost at all, um, so. What's like something that I can do to help save the bees? Uh, you can, you can not kill them to start. You can like, you see one in the house, just don't kill it. Uh, you can, you can plant uh, native flowers, um, native pollen, like uh, to things to attract them and, uh, and feed them, um, yeah. You could not cut down, you know, like. I, really, uh, I have a beehive in my backyard. Do you really? Yeah, for real. Really? Like my, like, uh, yeah, like they want to cut the patches because of beehive in them. Are you a beehive for real? Yeah. Do you go in it? You look at them? No, I haven't been really close to it. My dog got stung in the eye, so I've just been kind of staying away. But they're in there. Or is oh. it like a someone's like a it's like a wooden box? Down. It's like nature. 
Like, oh, that's so cool. Yeah. Can I come? Can yeah. I come look at them? Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. You want to come? I don't know what, like... I mean, I don't, I don't want them. I yeah, feel like... You can check them out. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to check them out. I mean, I do want them, but, like, I'm sure they maybe don't want me. I don't want to just take them. Yeah, if they're happy and safe there, and then we can just leave yeah, them there. Yeah, you want to come take, like, check them out? Check them sure. out? <laughs> yeah, we don't know what to do with them. Like, the... Really? Yeah, the landscaper, like, wouldn't... Do it. Oh. So, like I was gonna have to. Like, so so what are they? Or are they so, what are they in? What are they, it's like? A, it's like a, it's like a shrub and slash tree. There's like a. It's like a hollow part, something. It's like. Uh yeah, I mean it's like uh, the shrub's probably like my height, and then there's it's like back in, and up against like a fence. Okay. Next yeah, to like sure. a shed. And are they like just like building it? Naked hive, just like wax out in the open. I got the comb. I haven't really got that close. Yeah. Um, I'll get close to him. Okay. And my dog, yeah, like I said, like, dog he, got like, stung. They were, yeah, and I'm like, I don't. He know just why. got stung once. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Um, uh, yeah. Like where she got stung. She got yeah. stung right there too. Yeah, it puffed up. I was like, oh man. Like I'm kind of used to these because we had a big backyard when I was growing up, and I would like they would go on the little clovers and I would like, yeah. chase them around. Yeah. So they were cool. Um, but yeah, they don't sting you then. I don't think they like really want anything to do with you then. But like, if you go near their hive, I'm surprised you only got stung once. Really? It's like yeah, they're like a like it's like they're not single. They're like a whole organism. Yeah, I never really thought about that. Yeah. They're like a like one moves because I'll be moving in the hive and like I'll if I like move my hand over to one side too quick, like ten bees will come up like all of them at once, just like to my hand like that. That's and so it's like, yeah, it's wild. They, they like think together and they go through stages of their life where like four days will, or like three or four days will go by and then like a whole nother chemical for them to do a whole nother job and the hive will come by and like they're always doing what their, their like brain chemicals tell them to do. Like it's like no one's like slacking on the side, like not doing their work for the day, you know, they're all just like completely devoted, 100% devoted, like of their life. They're like cells in a body. It's awesome. Mm. Oh, cool. Kind of reminds me of killer whales. Cause, like killer, I say killer whales are really smart, and they like how they maneuver in a pot. Oh yeah, they like, like, really like, a, like a single organism. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Bees, I always knew bees were mm. or something mm. to bees because they special. do like weird things, right? They like, do like weird things. They do weird things that yeah. like like they've been studied for thousands of years and like people still don't people still don't know why they do the weird things that they do and then there's like decisions that they make and we're just like we have no idea why they make these decisions like to pick a queen or to leave or to do certain things in the hive we're just like and then they maintain the temperature in the hive like 95 degrees all year round and yeah they'll just like vibrate and like you know when you heat up molecules it just makes uh, just makes heat so they just like keep themselves vibrating through the whole winter and they just yeah they're cool that is really cool they're really cool i think they're so cool and then like i like to just look at them individually and watch how they just kind of like move around and look and make like their own personal decisions on things and just kind of like they'll like look and like like look around and do stuff like that so i just think they try to like think how bees thinking but can't do it. So. <laughs> do you think rolls the best blondes in America? Oh, uh, <laughs> Eamon. <laughs> he rolls really good blondes, so I'm gonna say him. I think that's all. I appreciate the support of my daughter. She's here with like signs that say "Go, Mom," which is awesome because I get so nervous for interviews. For real. Um, but yeah, thanks for having me.